So hi guys, I'm gonna try to do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna actually just try to talk to you while I do this. So I went to uh, Fred Meyer and I got some tomato starts. Uh, for those of you that can grow from seed, that's awesome. I used to do it way back in the day, but it's just easier to get these uh, starts already made. So I, and I try to look for, you know, somewhat organic, but you know, if they don't have them, whatever, you know. So, but here's the thing. So I'm gonna get ready to plant my garden. And what I wanna do is I wanna plant these really deep. And I learned this from my, my granny. Uh, see, all tomato plants have all these like little fuzzy hairs and all of those will become a root source. Tomatoes are like the easiest thing to grow on the planet. So what I'm gonna do I hope you can see this, but there's all these like little side shoots coming up. I'm just gonna remove those with my scissors. I'm gonna cut it close to the stem, but I'm not going to cut into the stem. I don't wanna damage the stem. And then ultimately I'm just gonna leave them overnight so these cuts can harden off, but I'm gonna take all of this off because my goal is to let it, let it kind of bounce back and grow a little bit. I want to plant all of this under the ground so every bit of it becomes a root source. Because the more roots, the stronger the plant, the more nutrient uptake it can have, uh, you just get more yield. Now these plants are seriously suffering from chlorosis. You know, they need some, well they need to get out of the pot. Like look at, look at all these roots and they're white. So when you're picking a plant from the store, you want plants that have a nice white root system. If they're all yellow and, you know, uh, root bound, it's not as healthy of a plant, but this is a very healthy looking plant. It just needs to get out of this little container and, you know, get into the ground and uh, stretch its legs and get some nutrients. So I'm going to I'm going to take another one off here. Now I don't want to take too much off. I don't want to shock the plant so much that uh, it dies. You know, so I've got one, two, three here. I'm going to go for it and I'm going to take off one more on this one. And then I'm going to set it aside. This one is an early girl and it grows Let's see, 57 to 63 days for maturity, which is perfect around here. I'm getting the garden in later than I normally do, but our weather went weird. We were so warm, sunny and dry, and then all of a sudden, a couple weeks ago, it just started to rain nonstop, which, you know, it rains a lot here in Oregon, but not this late, you know, normally I have the garden in. Okay, so this is the early girl, and like I said, I'm just gonna do that there, and I'm gonna let it sit overnight at least. And see, there's a, a little, uh, a new shoot coming up. We don't, I don't want that. So I'm just gonna pinch that off. Okay. I'm making a mess of my dye table, and if I'm screaming and shouting, or if you, I can't tell, if I'm talking too loud, or if I'm not talking loud enough, I'm sorry. I'm trying something different here. Okay, so now this next one. Oh, it's a big boy. And it's indeterminate, which means it's going to grow as big as the plant can grow. So it needs to be staked up. If it was a determinate, it's already designed within the seed how big it can grow. And those are usually good, determinant are good for growing in a pot or on a patio, or if you don't have a way to stake your plants or whatnot. But I have a big garden and I can just let these things go crazy and I'll stake them up. So this is indeterminate and it's going to get as big as the plant wants to get, unless I do serious pruning, which I usually don't. But I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Let's see, better boy. 78 days. I'm gonna have to mark my calendar once I plant these. So I'm gonna go down. So see, look, there's healthy roots. 
They're nice and white. It's always been my experience that plants don't like to grow in clear containers to root, but you know, whatever. They're just letting us know that the roots are healthy. So I'm going in close to the stem and I'm cutting off that. I'm just gonna call it a crotch. I'm just removing that. And let's see, I've got one, two, three. I can go, I can take one more off and this plant will be fine. Okay, so I, again, I'm gonna let it just sit overnight. I'm gonna let it do its thing. Oh, my poor dye table, you guys. Okay, now this one, what did I get? Oh, a sweet 100. These are so delicious. I love cherry tomatoes. When I'm out watering in the garden, I just pick them off and eat them like they're candy. They're so delicious. And this one says 57 to 70 days. So let's see, June, so July. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the end of August before I'm really gonna start to enjoy any of this stuff which is a bummer because for barbecues and you know, you want to start eating your fruit, but our growing season is pretty short here. Okay. So again, you see, I've got this growing tip up here and it's not, it's not overly healthy. You see all that yellow. Um, it's unhealthy and there's veining. Um, once I get it in the ground and start giving it some organic nutrients, it'll, it'll bounce right back and be an extremely healthy plant. But I'm just gonna take off right against the stem. Oh, I got a spider going along my table. I'm just gonna go up, just do it all around. All of this is gonna go underground and uh, create stems. I'm gonna bury it. I'm gonna bury it all the way up to here. See, I've got one, two, three. I hope, oh gosh, I don't know if I'm getting it. One, two, three. I'm gonna cut this one off too. Okay, now I'm just gonna keep these. I'll probably set them back outside, but I'm not gonna put them in the sun. What I, oh, there's a little bit I left behind. I don't want to stress them out. I don't want them to get, you know, hot or anything like that. So I'm just going to take them, uh, set them, you know, set them outside. They can get some air and just kind of leave them alone. I'll come check on them tomorrow afternoon. I might even let them go a couple of days. And if we get some more coming out, and actually right here, I want to show you something now that I'm thinking about it. It's too soon for this plant to go into fruiting, right? So you see that, see that there? Each one of those is potentially going to become a tomato. It's too soon. This plant doesn't have enough uh, support system. So I'm gonna pinch that off. Or you could use your scissors. Oh, and there's a little one in the crotch there. I don't want that. I'm gonna keep it as a single stem for a while. Now. Because I just pinched those flowers off, it's going to give all of the energy back into the roots. This one also has one. See right there? It's too soon. I'm not ready for it to flower so or to, to bloom for tomatoes. I want the plant to grow strong before it starts to make tomatoes. So I'm just going to pinch it off with my fingernails, just right, right to the base. And now that, that center tip, well, wait a minute, which one? Oh, that's the leaf. So now this growing center can just keep on making a nice tall plant. And when I plant them, hopefully Bo will come over and help record me planting them so I can show you what I do. Cause I'm going to dig really deep down and, and get them good and strong. So yeah, I'm excited. Oh, oh, you guys. I got this. Oh gosh. It's praying mantis seeds or not seeds, eggs. And it says that I, in about two to six weeks, 100 to 200 mantis will hatch out of the mud packed seam. So I could leave it in this container. I could do it, uh, like hang it up out in the garden. The garden isn't growing yet. Um, or just keep it and watch it. So I don't know if I should keep it 
in the house or if I should keep it outside, but I just don't want them to hatch and crawl through these little holes and have 200 praying mantis in the house because that would be totally freaky. Um, but anyways, I'm excited about this. So I'm going to just keep vlogging on this. We're going to watch it. I think I might keep it outside, but in a really protected area. And so I can go check on it every day. And if I see them hatch, then I can record it. Because I think it'd be totally cool. I love praying mantis. They're the neatest um, insect. They're like aliens, but they, they watch you. They turn their head. They look at you. I mean, they really are like a, a an alien human, but in, in an insect form. And they're so awesome. And I know a lot of you that have hummingbirds, you might say, well, the praying mantis will kill the hummingbirds. Not in my world. There, there are too many hummingbirds and not enough places for them to hide to get the hummingbirds unless they're on the feeder. And if they're on the feeder, I gently move the praying mantis to the garden because they're so beneficial to the garden. They eat all the bad bugs. You know, so please don't don't ever kill a praying mantis. Just gently move it. They're they're harmless and they're sweet and they're super cool. So I hope to get a hundred to two hundred praying mantis. That would be awesome. All right, guys. Well, uh, I I'm going to post this whether it turned out or not. And I and I'm sorry if I'm screaming. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm not talking loud enough. I won't know. This is my first time trying and. Um, I'm going to take you on a, a vlog all this summer of my garden because it turns out pretty amazing and I'm proud of it and uh, it feeds a lot of people. I give a lot of uh, vegetables away to shelters, to my neighbors, to the family, to everyone and I really enjoy doing it. So this is the first step right here. Yay! 